Hey everyone, Nathan here, Absurd Being. Okay, let's get back to the book. So we took a week off last week to look at absolute um, emptiness or absolute negation. And that was kind of a detour, but we're back on track today. And we will be finishing up part two of ethics. So the fundamental structure of human existence. And we're looking at the last two chapters, chapter six and seven. So the first chapter, chapter six, is called The Negative Structure of a Human Being. Now, basically, in this chapter, what we are going to be doing is resolving that contradiction that we identified a couple of videos back. So remember, we said that we had that problem with betweenness. Betweenness as this notion of um, the connection, the connectedness we, we have or that exists between individuals and, and which is primary um, and based in, in kind of the whole rather than the individual. But we said that betweenness is constituted among individuals, but individuals are determined by the whole. So the contradiction there is which comes first. To get to one, you have to have the other. And so there's kind of no way to get into this circle, if you like, from the beginning. Uh, which was the same contradiction that we found in that term ningen, human being, where individuals are basically different from society. That's what makes an individual an individual. And yet they somehow dissolve themselves into society. So society is somehow made up of individuals, but individuals that are no longer seen as individuals. How does this, again, how can we make sense of this contradiction between an individual and um, the society in which no individuals uh, appear as individuals, rather that they're kind of absorbed into the collect collectivity? Um, so those were the, the it's kind of the contradiction at the heart of this this part, which we are trying to unravel. And along the way, we have come to a couple of important insights. The first is that the individual is actually the negation of the community. And the other is that community is the negation of the individual. So these are crucial in insights. They still don't resolve the contradictions. But we still have the problem of uh, if, you, if you have an individual... It's a negation of community, so you must have had the community first, but the community is a negation of the individual, so you must have had, you know, to have the community, you must have had an individual first. There's that circle again, the chicken and egg kind of paradox. How does this get resolved? That's what we're going to, to um, deal with here. So we've got those two negations. The, um, the important point here is that both are negatives. So an individual is a negative, negation of community. Community is also a negative, which means we can't understand this by starting with a positive. So if we try and get into the circle with a positive individual or a positive notion of the whole community, um, we're doomed from the start. There's just no way to make sense of it that way. And this is how Watsuji does it. There are three moments in, um, in this process for him. And the first one is the key to, to unraveling the contradiction, is that human beings are originally empty. And although Watsuji makes this, he kind of, um, as I said in the last video, he, he kind of flirts with this, this in, in terms of, in, in, in the sense of metaphysics. So he, he's, he uses the word absolute negativity, um, which I don't think is the right way to go. I think that just, for all the reasons I, I pointed out in the last video, it is, uh, just takes us off in a complete tangent that, that that doesn't get us any real answers. Um, so 
I don't think this is this should be read as metaphysical, but the idea is human beings are originally empty. We're originally neither individual nor community. And if you think about it, right, when we're we're when we're born, we're babies. We have we are neither. We are neither individuals. We are neither nor sorry. We are neither individuals nor are we a part of a community. We we are in a sense nothing empty not metaphysically though that, that's that's the problem we don't want to start thinking of ourselves as metaphysical emptiness that's a whole buddhist direction we don't want to take but we're we're, we're neither an individual nor are we a part of a community that, that's a good um practical approach to this so when he says human beings are originally empty that's that's what I read this as. That's how I read this. We are neither an individual nor part of a community. So we're a negative from the start. And that's really the, the key to resolving this contradiction, how we get into this paradox or how we get out of it. So human beings are originally empty. That's the first, the first uh, moment. We are a negative. We're neither individuals nor part of a community but this and this is the second movement we experience coercion from society which uh, you know through which we pick up traditions and customs and ways of behaving and and all these kinds of things things that are expected of us norms cultural norms right these these things all imprint on us uh, so this is this is kind of coercion this is very Heideggerian, das man, uh, the other. So this is this is what's happening to us as children, and against this we rebel. We rebel against this, um, which is the first negation, and it's this negation, the negation of that coercion of society, which creates the individual, and that's. That's brilliant. That gets us. In, that gets us that first negative step where the individual is created. And what's even more brilliant is this insight that this first negation, while it is a negation or a uh, yeah a negation of the community, a rebelling against the community, actually it's a deeper negation than that. It's actually negating the emptiness that we already were through the proxy of the community, through the proxy of society. So we're negating the, the um, emptiness, the, ne the, the original neg negative that we were, so that we become something, an individual. I really like that. So this, this first negation that we talked about, the negation of community to become, to give rise to the individual, is actually, we can, we can see it in a deeper light now, it's the negation of this original negative that we were, this original emptiness, neither individual nor community. It's a negation of that to give us something in the first place, to give us, this is where the first positive um, thing facet of our existence arises when we negate that negation to give us to, to uh, allow us to become an individual and society is what we negate against is what we rebel against what we um it's kind of the, the surface level if you like we neg we rebel against that but actually in doing so we are negating that original negation which we are really uh, that's a really deep insight I think there so that's the second movement and the third movement is then the second negation the negation of the individual which gives us the society that looking beyond ourselves as as an individual and seeing ourselves as um, Kind of absorbed into the into society, being um, seeing ourselves not as individuals, but as 
part of this this greater whole. So kind of overlooking our individuality. And that's the second negation, the third moment in this in this movement. And again, Watsuji uses words like absolute negativity here. He he continues to use this, which again just confuses the issue, I think, um, conflating metaphysical with like the concrete, practical, real world applications. Um, but in this, he, he says explicitly this movement, the second movement, is not to be understood as a mystical experience in which the individual is immersed in the absolute. So he's again walking this that fine line between kind of Buddhist metaphysics and uh, what I would just call good old-fashioned philosophy. So, yeah, he's, it's just that, there's that tension, I find, running through the whole book. But that's just an example of it. And so this second negation, then, is actually a return to our original state of emptiness, our original state of negativity. We are, in ourselves, as individuals, nothing. Rather, we are part of this greater whole. We become absorbed. It's probably too strong a word, but but we we become a part of this greater whole, and that that becomes more primary than than the individual which we are. So essentially, then the the quote is. Community is the movement of the negation of negation in which absolute negativity returns to itself through its own self-negation. Okay, so it's worth just thinking about this quote a little bit, um, just to make sure we understand it. So the movement of the negation of negation. So double negativity, double a double negation. Originally, we negated society in order to become an individual and that, that actually conceals another negation because the negation of society is actually a negation of the emptiness which we already originally were so that's kind of buried in there as well just keep that in mind but that was the original the the, the first negation and then the second negation is where we negate that negate the individual to become a part of, to, to become society. So that's the double negation, negation of negation, uh, in which absolute negativity returns to itself through its own self-negation. So absolute negativity, Watsuji is using that word to just mean um, the individual, the person. The person, I think, is probably the best way to think of that in which the person returns to itself through its own self-negation. So in, in performing this double negation, we come back to our original state, which was that state of emptiness to begin with. So negating itself in order to get back to its original um, starting point. So there are a couple of or I guess just a brief a brief summary of this first chapter. There are three moments which make up the the process, um, the fundamental structure of what human beings are, which is a negative one. Three moments. The first is fundamental emptiness, where we are nothing. We are neither an individual nor a community. Then the second step, which was individual existence, the negation of the society in order to become an individual, which was actually, again, a negation of the emptiness which we were, which which created, if you like, the individual. Negation of that emptiness was carried out through the proxy, through or through the medium of society. And then the third moment is social existence, which is a return to that emptiness because we negate the individual and that gives us society proper in which we as individuals become nothing we become part of this greater whole and the other important 
uh, thing to take away from that, I think, is the, the the idea here of the negative structure of a human being. That the the, the fundamental structure is negative all the way through. It's all negations. Um, and in particular, this double negation, negating society to become an individual, negating the individual to become society. And then there are two key points which Watsuji points out that are, that are worth mentioning. The first is that this double movement, this double negation, is realized endlessly, he says. So it's not, it's not a static or an absolute destination. It's not a, a, a place you can reach and then kind of relax. Okay, you've done it. Now, now, now you've, you've fulfilled what you, what you had to fulfill. Um, it's not like that. It's something that we're continually doing. It, it's something that happens throughout our entire lives. It's ongoing. I really like that. And one of the things I like about it is that it, um, well, first, it, it just seems to make sense to me. Life is an ongoing process. There's never a point where we can say, okay, I've done it now. Now I can, I've done, I've done the, the core of, that I had to, or I've achieved the core of what I, what I needed to. Now I can relax. Now I'm fully realized, if you like. Now I can just, you know, focus on other things. That doesn't seem right. Life, human, human existence to me always seems like it's something that we are working at. Not in the sense that we're always trying to improve ourselves, or that that's true as well, but in the sense that uh, as long as we're living, there, there's kind of an effort involved. There's a tension. There's something, you know, uh, existence is, existence requires effort. It's not something that uh, we can ever achieve completely and then kind of rest on our laurels. It's something that always needs effort. Continue just to exist. Just to exist requires some kind of um, tension or effort. And this this connects for me with, with some metaphysical ideas that I have, but that's kind of drifting off topic. Um, but anyway, I like this idea that, that existence is never finished, if you like. And it also is a nice counterpoint to the Buddhist notion of enlightenment, right? Which is basically a destination. It's, 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 a, it's a level you achieve, right? Once you achieve enlightenment, you, uh, you, you, know, you don't have to worry about going through the process anymore. You've already done it. You're enlightened. That's what it, you've achieved that final level, that's always, um, it's never sat well with me, that idea. And it's kind of, there, there are, I hate to, to, to rag on Buddhism so much, but it's, it's just so central to this, that there are these kind of plateaus in Buddhism where you, where you reach certain levels, you know, you've overcome, uh, you, you've overcome this particular problem. Now you're at this level and you've overcome, or you, you, do another thousand hours of meditation or whatever, and you overcome the next problem. You've overcome hate or greed or something, and you, and you just kind of keep moving up until you get to this final plateau, this final destination of enlightenment. That's never, it's never seemed right to me. Um, but yeah, so that's a nice point. And the other point that I wanted to mention, uh, he. He says, without this real world whole, i.e. not a, a mystical absolute, capital A absolute, there is no ethics. Without this whole, without the, the community, society that we are, that we are getting to through this, this movement, this double negation, ethics doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. And I really like that as well. I think there is something fundamentally true to that, which, which a lot of ethical theories overlook, the idea that there, there is, you know, we can't just apply a formula to actions and try and, 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 and let that determine uh, our ethics or our, or our theories, our, the our, our ethical theories. Um, we can't just make a list of rules to follow and, and that's going to work for our ethics. 
which you know everybody can just follow as individuals and everything will be fine it doesn't it's just these seem too simplistic to me um i like this notion that we there is no ethics without getting to this this place that that transcends individuality we have to go beyond ourselves as individuals we have to see ourselves in a different light and that's what Watsuji provides here i think okay so that's chapter six chapter seven is the fundamental law of a human being all right so this chapter is an attempt to ground some key concepts of ethics in this fundamental law that we have uncovered the double negation which makes up the, the essence of a human being and the, the the concepts that we're going to look at are good and bad conscience freedom and responsibility uh, obligation and responsibility so we'll start with goodness and badness um, so Watsuji rejects attempting to discern good and bad from moral sentiment so from kind of actions that we approve of or that we disapprove of or through values through creating values for ourselves or trying to, to determine a list of values which which um, we can perhaps agree are good or bad uh, and he rejects these because they're kind of abstract they're theoretical it's a very detached way of approaching ethics great i 100 percent on board with that with that pro, with that operation so good and bad he says are only found in acts in characters in personalities these kinds of things i.e things that you find in people in human beings therefore if we're going to look to understand what good and bad are we have to look to people we have to look to human beings which means since we've uncovered this fundamental structure in this double negation then we have to look to the double negation so that's going to be core in our understanding of goodness and badness i know i like that as well so i'm with him 100 percent up to here this is where we go off the rails a little bit so this is what he says badness then badness is this first negation it's wrapped up in the first negation which is a negating of the society in order to become an individual and the reason this is bad he says is because it's a revolt fundamentally ostensibly it's a revolt against society but fundamentally it's a revolt against oneself right remember one's own emptiness it's a revolt against that emptiness in order to be someone to be an individual so because it's a revolt against one's own foundation watsuji sees that as being a good definition of badness and then goodness is the second negation which ne the negation of the individual in order to become society become a whole why because this is a return to that foundation it's a return to the individual as empty it, it empties of us of our individuality so that we see ourselves as um, a part of this collective primarily before we are individuals or instead of seeing ourselves as individuals so i'm not sure about this i mean first why should the fact that it's a foundation it's our starting point why does that make it good you know there's just no reason why just because it's our foundation it's it's good so that's the first problem second problem is to get to the idea that emptiness if we if we forget the idea that it's our foundation but this idea that emptiness our original state of emptiness 
or nothingness is good really only makes sense if you try and, and elevate it to the level of metaphysics where this is this this nothingness is something in itself something valid from a metaphysical perspective when it isn't right no, I mean, the, the emptiness that we're talking about here, original emptiness, if you like, like I said, it's, we're not an individual and we're not a part of a community. We're, we're neither. It's, it's, it's not good or bad. It has nothing to do with good or bad. So totally not on board with this one. Badness and goodness. How the way that he connects those. And again, there's a very Buddhisty flavor to this, right? Absolute negation is some kind of goodness or some kind of goal that we should attain to. Um, it, it's just, aside from the, the conflation between metaphysics and the concrete that, that's going on, um, I've never found that a particularly appealing element oh, actually that's not true i have found it appealing in the past but i don't find it appealing now that there's that there's anything um valid or valuable about negating our our opinions or our beliefs kind of trying to 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 get to this perspectiveless perspective essentially a, a position from which we we don't exert any any kind of um, preferences or desires. All of that has to be eliminated, uh, and and I, I can't get on board with that with that um, project. And that that's at the core of of Buddhism again. So this is again like Watsuji's Buddhist kind of um, affiliations kind of lead him down this path but but i think yeah it, it takes him astray from my perspective anyway leads him astray one interesting point he says regarding this though is that the second movement the second negation is impossible without the first one right but you have to have that first negation which we have which he has claimed is bad so you have to have that bad first negation in order to have the good second negation. And in that case, the first one actually ceases to be bad, doesn't it? Because it's, it's just a necessary part of the good. It's a part of the, the, the second negation. It's, it's the opening act, if you like. But it's required if you want to get to the, to the, the, the second negation. And I like that. And that, I think, hints more at the direction of uh, an ethics that, that I would be prepared to accept, which, which kind of dispenses with this notion of um, trying to identify what, what's good and what's bad. It might sound crazy to say an, an ethics with no ideas of goodness or badness, but it's more like there's no absolute goodness or absolute badness. We can't just um, define these terms simplistically like this. So Watsuji has rejected kind of that kind of simplistic definitions, just giving simplistic, um, what he, he said, abstract and theoretical arguments for goodness and badness. But kind of that's what he has done in the end, right? He's just applied it to the fundamental structure of human existence. Um, and I think, yeah, that, that there are problems with that. However, having said that, even though Watsuji points out the first movement ceases to be bad here, he will reject that later. He'll, he'll amend this a little bit later in the book and we'll see that, um, at a, in a later video. And at this point, he also talks about inauthenticity and there are two ways to be inauthentic. Uh, and the first is to fail to complete the first movement. So if we fail to execute that, the negation of society to become an individual, then what happens is the result is we fall victim to the crowd. 
So again, very Heideggerian, very Nietzschean, even Kierkegaardian, right? The crowd, we, we just kind of follow along with society. We, we never become individuals with our own ideas and opinions. And that's the first way to become inauthentic. The second way is to fail to complete the second movement, second negation, um, so that we always reject the whole and we get stuck at that point. And this then sees individuals as separate atoms existing side by side rather than a, a, a true collective or society. And he says he calls this evil, which, which seems a little bit extreme, but but um, but yeah, that, that so that second way of becoming inauthentic is there. Then we have conscience. So con a conscience, your conscience is always accusing or prohibiting what Suji observes. It's always negative, in other words, which leads him to say this. If it is supposed that one hears the voice of negation from one's innermost, then there exists a negation at the rear of one's self. This negation is exactly what we have comprehended as the law presiding over a human being. Um, okay, so we've got conscience, which is negative. It's always negative. And basically, Watsuji is just connecting this with the fundamental structure of human being, which, as we have seen, is essentially negative. It's composed of these negations. Um, it seems a little bit flimsy to me, though, that connection. It's, it's kind of like, you know, conscience is always negative. Oh, actually, human beings are in their structure, in the core of their being, and negative as well. So there's a connection there. But, you know, it's like not everything we, we say, not all of our self-talk is negative, right? We have positive self-talk as well. Where does that come from then? Then it's kind of like a mystery, right? Where, where this comes from. So I don't think that really explains conscience much. I find it hard to believe that uh, conscience could have some, uh, any kind of genuine connection to this fundamental structure of human beings that we've uncovered here. Seems a little bit, a little bit weak, that connection anyway, to me. Then we've got freedom. Watsuji identifies two kinds of freedoms, two kinds of freedom, the individual acting against the whole, so an individual exerting their own um, desire, their own will, uh, in the face of society or the community or other people. That's a kind of freedom. And the other kind of freedom is the individual capacity to self-initiate without an external cause. So the, the capacity we have to, um, to act on our own intentions, if you like, to act on our own um, without being kind of coerced, either positively or negatively, I think, by, by an outside factor. Um, so that's fine, right? Those are two kinds of, two ways of thinking about freedom. Uh, and these are, again, kind of connected to the double movement, I think, validly in the sense that the double negation involves individuals and wholes and acting kind of in relation to those, negating in relation to those. And that's kind of what, what um, freedom is. How, how Watsuji sees freedom. So that seems fairly, fairly legitimate. And the last one is obligation and responsibility. And this, he says, arises from the coercion of the whole. So arises from the whole um, kind of imprinting itself and its, its ideas upon us. So we do feel obligated to do certain things. We do feel responsible because of the way we've been conditioned, if you like, by society. Uh, and that, again, connects nicely with, with what we've identified here, the, this negative structure of human beings and, and the interplay between the individual and the whole. So I, I quite like that. And it's very reminiscent, actually. This is a very 
I, I, Watsuji doesn't go into this in a lot of detail, but it's very reminiscent of Henri Bergson's account of um, morality in, in the last book he ever wrote, actually, The Two Sources of Morality and Religion. I think that's what it's called. Um, but yeah, so I quite like that. I think there is more to to unpack in that, although Watsuji doesn't doesn't really go into any of these points in a huge amount of detail in the book. Not that I remember anyway. Not, I, I didn't. My notes are fairly sparse in this area, and I think that's why. Um, but the, the the key point with all of those four aspects of ethics, goodness and badness, conscience, freedom, and obligation and responsibility, is that Watsuji wants to connect them all to his fundamental law. He wants to connect them all to what it is to be a human being, the, the essential nature or structure of human existence. And that is the right way to go, I think. Even though I disagree with some of what he said about goodness and badness and conscience in particular, um, I think the overall project is is definitely on the right track as far as ethics goes. Okay, must be time for a summary. So first we looked at the fundamental law of a human being, which is this movement or return of the double negation. And we broke this down into three moments. Fundamental emptiness, which is what we are originally, um, which I interpreted as just being, meaning that we are neither an individual nor society. Watsuji kind of, like I say, flirts with this Buddhist notion of absolute negativity, but I think that's a bit of a red herring. Um, make up your own mind on that. So fundamental emptiness is our first moment. Second moment, individual existence, the negation of society uh, in order to become an individual, which was actually a negation of the negative, the negative which we were through the medium or through the proxy of society. And the third moment, social existence, negating the individual to become the whole. And there were a couple of key points. The first one was that this process is realized endlessly. It's never complete. We never attain our existence as something we no longer have to work at. It's always a work in progress, not in the sense that there's a goal either, not in the sense that, not even in the, the kind of ontic sense that we're always improving ourselves or striving to make ourselves better or anything like that. Just existing as human beings requires effort. That's, uh, I think, an important point. And the other point was that this is not a mystical absolute. It's a real world whole, and without that, there is no ethics. And that is also a really key point. Then we looked at goodness and badness. Watsuji broke this down so that bad is our first negative movement, the revolt against the foundation. And good is the second negative movement, a return to the foundation, to that emptiness, that state of emptiness where we're neither. Uh, well, that's the thing too. It's not a full return in my, in my view. We don't actually come back to the original beginning where we were neither an individual nor community. We, we never come full circle to that because we, we come back to the community. We do become the community. So that's interesting, actually. I, I, didn't, I didn't think of that. So in my view, this is not a complete return. From Watsuji's point of view, it is a complete return. We come back to this kind of state of absolute emptiness. Um, which, again, metaphysical implications abound with that. Uh, but, but we'll leave that aside for now. So good and bad. Then we looked at inauthenticity. Two ways for this to happen. Failing to complete the first movement, which results in a 
falling victim to the crowd, going along with society, with what people expect of you, that kind of thing. And failing to complete the second movement, which is rejecting the whole, seeing us permanently as individual individuals, isolated atoms existing side by side. And that, for Watsuji, is evil. Then we went to conscience. Uh, Watsuji connected this with, or he, he saw conscience as a negation at the rear of oneself and used that idea of conscience always being negative to connect it with the negative within us or to the double negation that lies at the heart of human existence. Not so on board with that one. Then we looked at freedom, um, which Watsuji saw two different ways to understand. The first is the individual acting against the whole. And the second was the individual's capacity to self-initiate without an external cause. Uh, so two different ways to think about freedom. Again, not a lot of detail there, but just Watsuji trying to connect that to his fundamental law. And finally, obligation and responsibility, which arises naturally from the coercion of the whole. And that's the connection to his fundamental law. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting going back through this because I do remember Watsuji's ethics as being something I really enjoyed. And I do, like the, the good in ethics is is really good, I think. And I've never, I've never heard it anywhere else. Um, and it, I really find it, um, I think that there, are, there are some really deep insights here to be had, even though I don't agree with everything. Um, so it's, it's, you know, you take the good with the bad, but I, the good is really good, I think, here. So hopefully this helps anyway a little bit, moves you along your ethical path in some way. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I'll catch you in the next one.